Hey, I'm gonna well, hold on a second here. I gotta shut off the music. Oh, okay, so this is Bio 211. This is review for test number four, and we're gonna start off with drawing a long bone. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna click over here. Let's go here. Fantastic. There and long bone. Sort of looks something like we draw in class. This is Bio 211 at Norwalk Community College, and this is review for test number four, where the focus primarily the material is chapters 6, 9, 10, and 11, which is bone, articulations, which are the joints, muscle, and levers of muscles. What I've drawn for you here in black is the proximal and distal epiphysis of an imaginary bone. And we're going to put the E here for epiphyses. Epiphyses over here. That line right there is the actual line of the epiphyseal plate, meaning that that is the metaphysis. And this is the medullary cavity of a long bone. So therefore, we're in the diaphysis here, right? Okay. And there are many things you need to remember about a long bone, but this isn't a lecture. This is a review for an exam. So when you're thinking about a long bone, you're thinking about one, what type of growth can occur at a long bone? So let's go there first. And for us to understand growth, I want you to remember that, whoops, it's supposed to be an H. Sorry about that. There's supposed to be a periosteal membrane that surrounds the diaphysis of this bone. And notice I'm stopping here because in blue, I'm just gonna switch over to a light color blue here. Light color blue. Remember here is articular cartilage. And what's important to know there is that articular cartilage is made up of hyaline cartilage. So that we can actually stop trauma damage to the outer compact layer of bone, which sits on top of the trabecular bone here on both ends. And all articulating bones have hyaline cartilage for articulation to create a synovial joint. Okay, But growth happens here for apposition, and this blue arrow means we're going to grow inward, but growth can also happen in length by adding to the distance by the, from the epiphyseal plate to the midline here of our diaphysis. So think of yourself at around age five or six, right? You were fairly short as you grew taller. That epiphyseal plate grows from the zone of resting cartilage all the way through to calcified, nondescript trabecular bone that is replaced by compact bone on both ends. And that's actually how you grow in length. Now imagine that at all of your bones, okay? What else do we need to know about a long bone? So if we have that periosteal membrane here, the appositional growth happens as a result of, let's change colors here. Let's imagine this is the dense outer fibrous layer. Inside here is the layer of osteogenic growth for the periosteal membrane, which means deep to this red line, we're going to find cells that can grow in these spaces. And these are osteogenic cells. OG, which arose from mesenchyme, so therefore these become osteoblasts, OB, and osteoblasts become osteocytes. Okay, OC. So mesenchyme, M, becomes blast, becomes site. How do we regulate this? Well, we can increase the growth of this by increasing IGF, insulin-like growth factor. Okay, oops, that's supposed to be an F, sorry about that. We can also increase T3 and T4, this thyroid hormone, two types of thyroid hormone, you learn more about those in AMP2, and insulin. Insulin, and there's one more to throw in here. Your textbook mentions, I don't think your textbook mentions insulin, but none of this can happen unless glucose gets inside of cells. Okay, but the last one to think about, of course, is, of course, is human growth hormone, HGH. Okay, so what have we done here? We've said, look, bone can grow 
as a result of appositional growth. So I'll just put a big A here or growth in length from here. And we want to spend the rest of this review, we're already five minutes into this, right? And we're only on question number one, thinking about how mother nature lays down different types of bone formations. And one is gonna be the osteon, and the other, of course, is going to be the trabecular bone, because osteon bone growth is for compact bone, and this is for spongy bone. Okay, cool. So what's the next question here though? To get out of here, I'm gonna to have to erase all of these things. Sorry about that. There goes that, and let's go here. Go over yellow marrow, hydroxyapatite, the site of initiation of endochondral bone formation. What is a diaphysis before the bone material has begun to be laid down? Draw an FCP epiphyseal plate, where is blood cell development occurring? And what are the different bone cells that function? Okay, so there's a lot going on in this question. What I want to do is I want to take it piece by piece. We're going to draw again. Okay. And we're going to go back to here. And I'm going to draw a long bone again. And I'm just going to simply put the diaphysis here, attach to an epiphysis, put in that epiphyseal line so you know where the metaphysis is. And we're asking, where do you find yellow marrow? So let's put yellow marrow inside here. And I'm just going to put it right inside here, right? Okay, so where am I? I'm inside the medullary cavity. How did I make a medullary cavity? I made a medullary cavity out of using osteoclasts. Okay. Osteoclasts are a subset of cells. I'm going to put OC. OC. OC stands for osteoclast, and those osteoclasts release hydrochloric acid, HCl, and enzymes. ENZ, and those enzymes break down bone tissue to create this hollow space that as you age, we deposit inside of there. And that yellow marrow, of course, is adipocytes. What about that hydroxyapatite? Well, hydroxyapatite is the matrix, and the matrix here, of course, is calcium and phosphate. That's all there is to it. Keep it that simple. It deposits around something really important, and that's collagen. So collagen. And that's how we get tensile strength inside bone. Okay. Now, the next piece is, what is the difference between endochondral and intramembranous bone formation? So it says here, what's the initiation of endochondral bone formation. Well, this presumes that you understand that there are two types. There's endochondral, all right, and there's intramembranous. M, that's supposed to be an M. Okay, those are flat bones. Intramembranous are flat bones. Endochondral are all the other bones that arose from hyaline cartilage. Oops, it's supposed to be an H, H, Y. Highland cartilage. Okay, so what does this mean? The site of initiation for endochondral bone formation. Well, let's put down a, I'm gonna go to blue here, so you can see the sort of similarity inside your textbook where they go like this, and they put something like that, and that looks like the precursor to bone, where you actually have a perichondrial membrane surrounding all of this. And what happens is in the diaphysis, you actually start initiation of endochondral bone formation. So that's the answer, right? Once we actually have converted all of this hyaline cartilage to bone, this is going to be replaced. So if these are all chondrocytes, they will all be replaced by osteoblasts to then give rise to osteocytes inside of their osteons. Okay. So that means, what is the diaphysis before bone material can be laid down? It is hyaline cartilage. It is removed as it becomes calcified. The epiphyseal plates here are the remainder that's left over. And this is actually how we figure out how tall we're going to get. The consequence of converting this primary ossification center and these secondary ossification centers is that at the epiphyses, 
we put in trabecular bone. And in the trabecular bone, we give rise to blood cell development, meaning red blood cells and white blood cells can be arisen inside here and delivered into the circulatory system. But how do we actually build this bone? Let's switch colors here. And what I'm going to do is actually switch out of that all together. I'm going to get rid of the cartoons. Sorry about that. Okay. And I'm going to simply answer the question as a sort of a text box to answer. Okay. Let's insert text. Text box. And we're going to go here. And I'm going to answer this question. <sighs> Whoa. Did we change questions here? We did. Let's go back this way. Okay. So let's put text box here text box here. I'm going to go there and I'm going to go text box. Fantastic. Right. And what you have is to answer this, we have to remember that we have to have Osti, Osti blast cells take up calcium and phosphate from interstitial fluid and intracellular fluid and make matrix, which, and We'll put that there. I don't know. I just stop typing. I don't know why. And collagen, which is a protein which is transcribed or translated to give us the actual matrix of bone, right? Osteoballs. <laughs> Sorry, that's just wrong. BL, BL, osteoblast. Cells equals matrix. And collagen, which equals materials, which is going to be the secretion of bone growth. And these surround the live cells, which are going to be osteocytes now. Osteocytes. Okay? So there's the progression you want to pay attention to. Okay, so we've covered all of this. The next part is compact bone is made of what repeating structure? Well, let's just draw an arrow. Let's see if we can do this right here. I'm going to go like this. I'm going to go, you know what? I'm just going to do this. Screw it. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to go like this. Parentheses. This is going to be an osteon. S-T-E-O-N. <laughs> Build an osteon. B-U-I-L-S-T and osteon. And what that means is, of course, is you have a central canal. 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 And, whoa, I don't like when this happens. What happens? Central canal and canaliculi, canaliculi, right? Where they are canaliculi connecting osteocytes, osteocytes, in lacuna. Okay. That's supposed to say central. Can't like you that give us gives us nothing. Lacuna don't get to use anything as well. Okay. So when you're learning this, that's what I want you to pay attention to. I mean, obviously the central canal is how blood vessels get in. Oh, what other canals are there? Well, if there's a central canal, it's ascending north and south. You also have the Volkmans, L Volkmans. Okay, and I think they also call those perforating canals. Okay, Volkmans equals perforating, perfor, perforating, perforating. I'll pick up the freaking train station. Perforating canals. Okay. The distal and proximal facies that are there is covered. It has a covering. A covering on what uh, that does what? Well, of course, the here the hyaline cartilage, hyaline cart, protects from trauma. But what else does it do? Okay, so you want to think about reducing friction. You want to think about correcting for articulation processes.
What two bone different structures help provide for transport of nutrients in the bone? The bone is covered by what two membranes? So we already did this when we actually did the cartoon. Okay. And when I say two membranes, what I mean here is the fibrous, let's go like this, underlying gold. Okay. These, this means you're thinking not only of the fibrous fib, fib outer and periosteal. Come on, Jonathan. Steel inner membrane. And what that means, of course, is that that's where the osteoblasts osteo are going to be found. And what hormone targets osteoblasts? You know, how do we actually how do we actually regulate bone growth or take calcium out of the bloodstream? Well, that would be calcitonin, right? So uh, parathyroid hormone inactivates osteoblasts, cal calcitonin activates them. Okay, next. What is the function of growth hormone, insulin-like growth factor, calcitonin and calcitriol, as well as parathyroid hormone? Okay, so I think I'd probably be better off drawing this one, but instead of drawing it, because it seems to slow me down a lot, and I know you guys, your exams tomorrow, you want to get through this, so think about it. PTH is used when CA levels low, right? CA stands for calcium, so let's go CA2+. 2+. Plus. Two plus. So that's the electrolyte calcium inside your bloodstream. So parathyroid hormone presence in the bloodstream goes up when calcium levels are low. And the consequence there, so therefore... Therefore, osteoclasts activated to break down bone. Break down bone, okay? You release now calcium and PO4, P out the PO4. So remember, if you've activated parathyroid hormone, you're going to increase the calcium concentration inside the bloodstream, but you pee out the phosphate. Now, what you can do, of course, is now think about what are the other hormones doing? Well, growth hormone, insulin-like growth factor, they're going to increase. So let's just go growth hormone, increase growth rate, and therefore need more CA and collagen. That collagen, collagen grows along. Collagen grows along the line of stress on, on bone. So this is actually how you strengthen bone. You can do the same thing with insulin-like growth factor. The whole point is going to be this: What does calcitriol do? Calcitriol increases the amount. So calcitriol, calcitriol increases the amount of calcium absorbed by the digestive system. Okay. But it also regulates what happens at the kidneys. Okay. So when you're reading these, make sure you understand what each of the hormones is actually doing. Calcitriol. Looks good. Okay. Cool. Next. Last one. We'll take a quick break and we'll come back and finish up, I hope, the last seven. So to get bone thicker, what type of growth is needed? We're talking about, of course, appositional growth here. Let's go like this. Apo, Z-I-T, Apo, S-I, I-T-I-L, positional growth, okay, which means to make things thicker. To get bone longer, where does it occur? Well, it occurs at the epiphyseal plates, E-plates, and it's regulated, meaning to stop growth. To stop growth, we use estrogen. estrogen. We wanted to start growth, we would use insulin-like growth factor, human growth hormone, so on and so forth. According to the diagrams in your book, for both endochondral and intramembranous both grow, both to occur, what happens? Well, this actually has to be some form of crystallization. Crystallization. Yeah, looks like we're speaking about Uzbekistan here. 
crystallize z io n, which is going to be converted into some form of uh, calcification. Calcification. Okay. Because remember, the pH shifts. And when the pH shifts, crystal I. When the pH shifts, then you can begin to make a calcification because osteoclasts come in and kill, clean out that crystallization piece. Okay, it's a good place to stop. We've done 20 minutes. Probably a little too long, but hopefully you're still paying attention. See you in a minute.